What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I Graham Jesus and Matthews break down all the original content you watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the September 26, 2022 edition of Raw Talk, being hosted by Jackie Redman, Matt Camp, per usual, in the studio. Uh, they open up the episode running down the biggest headlines from Monday's Raw, which was a great show overall. My written review will be out momentarily on WrestleRant.com. Check that out. But five matches they advertised in advance. All five were good to great, a excellent show. The White Rabbit teases were great. And what I like about the White Rabbit stuff, I'll mention this briefly, they're not acknowledging it at all on WWE TV. They showed the QR code during the Rollins entrance, or uh, when Ray was making his entrance or whoever. They showed that quickly. But beyond that, they really have not talked about it at all. They haven't even, like the Dexter Loomis stuff, when he started appearing on Raw about a month or two ago, they were showing him, and they were like, oh, get that guy out of here. They haven't said anything about the QR code invite at all. Like, the QR code stuff like, you know, the invite to check out the link and whatever. They haven't referenced that whatsoever. They haven't talked about it on Raw Talk, on the SmackDown Lowdown, on the website. They're not putting these videos on the WWE.com, you know, on the, on the website or on WWE's YouTube channel. They're not putting it on anything. So, if you're not paying attention to that sort of stuff, you probably have no fucking clue what's going on, but if you're watching Raw Talk, I would assume that you probably have some inkling and an idea that Bray Wyatt is on his way back, which is great. But anyway, back to Raw Talk here. Uh, they recap the Bianca Belair EO Sky match that was won by Bianca. Uh, backstage, they catch up with Bianca Belair, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss. Bianca mentions the same thing she mentioned on Raw in that. They were supposed to have a match um, last... I mean, Matt Camp actually mentioned that, but Bianca mentioned that the last time they went one-on-one -on -one was inside Hell in a Cell. She hit the KOD on Bailey on top of a ladder and beat her decisively. So she recalls beating her. She has wins over Bailey. I think they're... They've had four matches, I think, and Bianca won three of them. I know they had a match on SmackDown in late 2020 that Bailey won. I think that was Bianca's first loss on the main roster, first singles loss. And then Bianca avenged the loss right before the Rumble. And then she went on to beat Bailey after she became SmackDown Women's Champion at WrestleMania Backlash and again in Hell in the Cell. Um, they talked to Bliss very quickly, Sarah Schreiber does. And, you know, they tease going for the tag titles. But honestly, seeing Alexa like in this segment and just on Raw in the last two weeks, this is not a bold opinion, but she has to go heel. She is going heel. I think she should go heel. And not only that, but thinking about Raw, her and Candice LeRae basically have the same gimmick at this point. Not just the fact, oh, they're both blonde, but like the happy-go-lucky, you know, plucky underdog baby faces uh, on the women's division on Raw, they kind of play the same role, and Alexa Bliss just isn't overly intriguing or compelling as a character in that role. I know that's who she is in reality, and that's great, and she's likable. And she's over and whatever. But the Lily shit is terrible. I don't know why she still has the doll. And Candace is just far better in that role. So now that Candace is back, and Candace is on Raw, there really is no need for Alexa to still be a babyface. And if Becky's coming back as a babyface, there is no doubt in my fucking mind that Alexa Bliss is going to be going heel very soon. She also didn't seem overly interested by the tag titles this time either. I think it was actually Sarah that brought up maybe going for the tag titles, and then Alexa kind of shifted the focus to Asuka instead and wished her a happy birthday. So I'm thinking Alexa turns heel at Extreme Rules. I don't know if she joins Damage Control. I don't know if that's necessary. The group really hasn't been the best book so far. They've been all right. Um, I'm thinking Alexa Bliss turns heel at Extreme Rules and costs Bianca the Raw Women's Championship. And they'll probably bring this up, but remember... I think it was the final Raw, and Triple H was in charge of that Raw, though it was probably pre-written by Vince before he left. On that last Raw before SummerSlam, she mentioned, I want next for the Raw Women's Championship, and she never got that shot. She was involved in the tag title tournament, but never got her shot of the Raw Women's Championship. So, coming off of all the teases and, all the teases and whatnot, I don't, want to, I don't want to see evil Alexa Bliss back, but if we get heel Alexa Bliss back... Maybe not going for the championship if she costs Bianca the title. Or maybe Bianca wins, and then she turns on her afterward. Either way, I think Alexa Bliss is going heel. Um, anyway, so like I said, she wished Asuka a happy birthday, and that was it. In the studio, the special guest this week I mentioned was JVL. He starts talking about Bailey versus Bianca in a ladder match at Extreme Rules, which I'm really looking forward to, by the way. And I think that's going to be the first singles women's ladder match on the main roster ever in WWE. 
We've had a few women's, obviously women's Money in the Bank ladder matches. We've had a few women's TLC matches. We've never had a single, as far as I can tell from looking back at it, we've never had a single women's match, uh, like a singles women's ladder match in on Raw or SmackDown in WWE. We've had a few in NXT for like the War Games advantages. And I think one in OVW back in the day, maybe between Victoria and Beth Phoenix. That was a long time ago. Other than that, don't know if we've ever gotten a singles women's ladder match in the main roster. And now we're getting it, which is cool. But what I was going to say was, JBL starts talking about that. You can barely fucking hear what he's saying. And it wasn't an it was an audio issue, but it wasn't because he was too low. It was because his service was awful. And I don't really I don't blame him for it. I mean. Shit happens, it happens to me quite a bit doing interviews and shit. It happens all the time, you know, it's, it's a simple mistake. But clearly, he mentioned at the end of the episode, he was seeing Bob Orton, like, downstairs at a hotel. He was probably at a convention. I thought he might he might have been out doing one of those... He's involved in a lot of programs, so I thought it might have been one of those things where he was, like, out doing charity or whatever, which very well still may have been the case. But this is not the first time this has happened. And JBL was not seen, I don't think, on this episode until the very end. And even then, his connection wasn't great. And Raw Talk is live. I think, obviously, SmackDown Lowdown, they taped because they put it up on on Peacock early on Saturdays. Raw Talk is live right after Raw. They can't pre-tape this, as far as I can tell. Um, And his connection was awful, so they probably just cut... I mean, between Jerry Lawler's stupid comments a few weeks ago, and now this... They honestly should probably just stop having guests on. I liked it at one point, but if this is going to be the case, just stop doing it. Again, this has happened before with JBL because he's constantly traveling, and his internet is always shit. So if they ask him ahead of time, hey, can you be on the show? And he says, I, you know, I can, but I'll be traveling. Just at that point, say no. Just hold out until he's home again and his connection is better because this was like, they didn't even reference it as pros and they just moved on as they probably should have, but... You could, like, Matt Camp was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. You could barely fucking hear what this guy was saying because it cut out so frequently. Anyway, so, um, like I was going to say earlier, Matt Camp mentioned that their I Quit match, you know, he referenced the I Quit match that Bianca and Bailey were going to have at Money in the Bank last year, which is why I thought when we got this match at Extreme Rules this year, it was going to be an I Quit match because that's what they were supposed to have last year. Honestly, that may have been what they were going to do if... They weren't already doing the I Quit match for Edge and Finn Balor, you know, that we found out about later on the show. I think this works better as a ladder match. Um, you know, I mentioned that on Twitter last week. It should be an I Quit match because of what happened last year. Someone said, oh, it makes no fucking sense. Well, if you watch the fucking product, it makes sense, you idiot. I mean, they obviously were going to do it a year ago. You know, they were still feuding then. They're feuding now. Why wouldn't it make sense, you fucking moron? But I think a ladder match works better to the better of their abilities. So I'm fine with that. Uh, They recap the return of Candice LeRae on Raw. Great to see her making her Raw debut with a win over Nikki Ash. A quick win at that, thank God. Uh, They interview Sarah Sarah Schreiber, interviews Candice LeRae backstage at Raw, who was super elated over her Raw debut. She couldn't believe it. She was obviously very excited talking about the inner child and her uh, arriving on Raw after so many years. And I said this to Alexis when the show was over. I'm so fucking happy for this woman because she was in NXT for way longer than she should have been. I mean, I know Johnny, it was probably his choice to stay. I feel like, I mean, I don't know what the relationship, I mean, obviously they're married. I'm not talking about that relationship, but as far as like, Johnny clearly wanted to stay in NXT. Did Candace feel the same way? That was the question. Did she know that she definitely would not get a shot on the main roster when Vince McMahon was running things? I don't know if he didn't want her or if they were going to call her up and Johnny was going to stay put, so she stayed put. I don't know what the process was there, and we'll probably never know. But realistically, this woman should have been on the main roster fucking years ago. It was a crime that she was... I mean, she never even won the NXT Women's Championship, which is also criminal, but, you know, she's great. Glad she's finally on Raw. That's my point here. Uh, She called it a wild night, a perfect debut... And uh, from there, back in the studio, Matt Camp calls Larray and Dakota Kai, who are facing off next week. They hype up the match. He calls them the pioneers of NXT as far as the women's division goes. Because not only were they there as recently as earlier this year, I mean, Candice hasn't been on TV since last summer, uh, since the wedding, I think, and maybe soon after, when uh, Indy and Dexter were doing their honeymoon on NXT TV. She hasn't wrestled since July of 2021 after, you know, she got pregnant soon after, and they lost the tag titles, her and Indy, that night. Um, but her and Dakota go back in that NXT women's division since 2018. They were actually involved in the first ever Mae Young Classic five years ago. 
So I, I I think Dakota was signed around then. Candice was not signed. Candice LeRae was not signed NXT until like January of 2018. So they really were a part of that early, early, not early NXT. That's like Paige. Um, but, you know, they were a part of that early crop of the NXT women's division, which is cool to bring up. Uh, from there, they recap the Kevin Owens and Johnny Gargano tag team win over Alpha Academy. Great match. They hype up Gargano and Otis for next week, along with Braun Strowman versus Chad Gable. They also recap Matt Riddle versus Damian Priest before also recapping AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn. Backstage, Sarah Schreiber catches up. I it was either I think actually it was Kevin Patrick. It wasn't Schreiber in this case. It was Kevin Patrick. Thank God, because Patrick is awesome. Um, catching up with Sami Zayn and Solo Sokoa. So I don't know what we did to deserve Sami on both Raw Talk and the SmackDown Lowdown from a few days ago, but very happy we're getting him on both shows in the last couple days. Sami says that, because uh, when Kevin says, oh, did you have a message to send from Roman Reigns this week? And Sami says, no message. Did you get a message, Solo? Did you get a message to send this week? And Solo says nothing. He just nods his head the entire time, which was great. Great dynamic here. He says there was no message to send from Roman Reigns, but he taught AJ Styles a lesson by beating him on Raw. Um, Kevin's like, oh, you, you gotta love wearing that. I can't do the Kevin Patrick accent, but he says that Sammy loves wearing the shirt that Roman that Roman uh, gave him on Friday SmackDown, and he's like, you probably haven't even washed it. You're like, you probably haven't even taken it off. And then Sammy acts all, like, shocked. He goes... Does it smell? Of course I've taken it off. And I think he was just, I mean, obviously in character, I think he was doing that to show he hasn't taken it off, but he doesn't want to admit that. So <laughs> that's what they were going for. Either way, it was great. It was really funny. And then he also said he canceled seeing a Ringo Starr concert. He goes, I, the guy's like 80. I don't know how, long, how much longer he's going to be around. He was going to go to a Ringo Starr concert before he found out he was uh, needed for Raw. I don't know if that's a shoot or not. I would love to know. But he canceled that to come to Raw, and he reassures the message was sent as far as teaching AJ a lesson. Uh, to close out, JBL says they get him back on the line here. He says that AJ's shirt, or not AJ, uh, Sami Zayn's shirt is cool. He calls Zayn very obnoxious, one of the most obnoxious people in the entire company, in the world even. But um, his shirt was cool, and he also praises AJ Styles as one of the best in the world. As far as the Edge and Finn Balor I quit match at Extreme Rolls, he says that he can't see Edge saying I quit having been with him and spending time with him since the ministry days. Uh, he just can't see a scenario where he sees Edge quitting to Finn Balor come the pay-per-view. He also says, as I mentioned earlier, he was uh, you know hurrying this up. He, he put Bob Orton on hold to do this show, and he probably should have just seen Bob because his appearance on the show was uh, pretty underwhelming, and not that it's always great, but... You know, um, the connection was awful, and they never even had a chance to ask him, like, what the update was on, on Happy Corbin. I know they asked him about it, like, a week and a half ago, but we still have no update on Corbin, so I guess they're just continuing to ignore ignore that. But, uh, yeah, they mentioned seeing Bob Orton after this was over. Uh, to end the episode, they plug Goldberg, The Miz, and Grayson Waller for Wednesday's Bomb So if you're interested in that, check it out. And that was Raw Talk for September 26, 2022. No real analysis. I don't watch this for the analysis anyway. I watch it for the interviews. And the interviews were great. Sami Zayn and Solo were fantastic. I say Solo, but he said nothing. Um, check that one out. Candice seeing her instant reaction to arriving on Raw was awesome. Check that one out as well. And the uh, Bianca, Asuka, Alexa Bliss interview, it was very brief, but it was fine. So uh, solid stuff here on Raw Talk for this week. Thank you guys, as always, for checking out my reviews. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Also by hitting the bell button to be notified every time a new video goes up. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.